Today on Locked On Canadians, we talk about how we would improve the All-Star game. We talk about where in the world is Sean Monaghan and why isn't the organization updating us on his status. Also, we have a three up this week. It's been a good week, so no, no real three down. All of that's coming up on today's Locked On Canadians. Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi there, everyone, and welcome to episode 779. We thank you for making us your first listen of the day on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. We are free and available everywhere. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more, and you can visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. My name is Laura Sapp, also known as The Active Stick, and I'm joined, as always, by Scott and Matla. Uh, we are both uh, deeply, deeply frozen. What is What were we in the deep freeze, whatever it is, but the weather's supposed to get better today. So, Scott, um, have you thought enough to talk about hockey today? Yeah, uh, it's a heat wave in Buffalo. It is currently 41 degrees outside. After yesterday morning, uh, that's 41 in Freedom Units, not 41 <laughs> in Celsius, or I'd be boiling to death here. Uh, we got down into the low, low wind chills yesterday. Uh, we were about minus 22 Celsius when I woke up yesterday morning, which is not as bad as it was uh, in Montreal. But I have finally, finally thought out enough to uh, talk about what is the start of the bye week for the Canadians, um, except for the prospects, I guess. Right. And so we are going to have a lot of prospect talk this week. We're going to have a, all, actually all kinds of talk. We've got a couple of guests lined up. Uh, a couple of them are show favorites. And uh, somebody gave us an idea about doing uh, report cards for the prospects. And we're going to be doing that with our very special guest, one of our favorite people. Like if we say one of our favorite people, um, let's see if the listeners can guess who we're having on. I think that's going to be on our Thursday episode. But before that, we've got special guests. We've basically like this is going to be like guest heavy for the next little while because Scott's going on vacation then I'm going on vacation. So we've got plenty of fun stuff planned. But you know what was planned fun stuff that could have been planned better? is the all-star game. So every year when the all-star game happens, there's always talk about how it's for the kids or for people who are there. Um, and it's not enough. It doesn't do enough to sell the league. And somebody made a really, really, really astute point is that the, the week is scheduled usually during a time where it's light on sports. So it's before the Super Bowl weekend. So it, the, and it's usually the week before. So it's got that break, right? And then there's there's no Major League Baseball going on right now. Uh, there's no Major League Soccer going on right now. The NBA is happening. But the way the NHL schedules it, like you would think that they would take more advantage of the fact that they're scheduling this event during a time when people are hungry for sports. And they don't really do, they don't do a good enough job of marketing it. They don't do a good enough job of selling it. And the events themselves, I feel like they need to be a little bit more compelling for viewers. Like anybody who goes to an all-star game, like Scott, you've covered an AHL one. I've covered an NHL one. I was watching all of our friends like in Florida have a great, fantastic time. It's a fun time, but it's not really doing enough to sell the game. And one, I, like a huge key thing is like, so I have a friend whose family literally lives in South Florida and like her mom asked her where the all-star game was this year. So like, this is not great marketing by the NHL. Um, and, but also, sorry, uh, real quick, but also people were disappointed in the events as well. And that's the thing is like, okay, it's always about the in-person thing. We talked about this last week. I think uh, when we recorded the mailbag is the all-star game is not so much about what's on TV for people. On TV, it's never going to be the same experience. It's all always about the in-person side of things. And the big issue I have is that it doesn't seem like in-person this year, the NHL did a very good job because the events were not, here's fastest skater, here's all the fastest skater stuff, here's hardest shot, here's all the hardest shot stuff, here's the shootout challenge. It's like, it's supposed to be simple. The NBA All-Star Game has it perfect. Here's the three-pointer three contest. 
everyone's going to go through this until we get to the end. Here is, you know, the free or free throws. Here's the dunk contest and everything. It all makes sense. And it's very simple. Like the home run derby in baseball. When you mix all these events together and then other parts of it are pre-taped that like aren't part of the actual day of all-star festivities. Uh, the surfboard challenge thing where apparently the surfboards just wouldn't fall over despite being hit at like 105 miles an hour. What are we, what are we doing here? Like you're in Florida and they, they did scrap an event, which sounded amazingly fun and that they were going to fire frozen meat pucks uh, and try to get alligators to eat the frozen meat pucks, which I think sounds so Florida and so perfect. And they scrapped it due to concerns from PETA, which, okay, I guess I understand, but like, how is like, it's like when they wouldn't let Johnny Gaudreau light his stick on fire so close to greatness and they didn't have it. And I was watching the AHL game. I was covering a rocket game on Friday during the skills event and everything. And as I'm just listening to things here, it's like, what is going on at this event here? As I'm passing, as I'm watching and passing on the side, I can't figure out what's going on. They just got to simplify it a little bit more to make it easier to follow still entertaining. But if you have, these are the events we're doing hardest shot, fastest skater, you know, target shooting, whatever. It makes it so much easier to follow and people still have a good time doing that. And then mix in random stuff during there, whatever, but sure. But like stop making the events themselves so complicated that you need like a D and D rule book to explain how everything is working here. I think that's it. It's like, it does not make for good viewing. And I think pre-taping it as well is not fun. Like by all means, and this might be contractual or like the willingness of the players or whatever, by all means, test out these events before, but do them live. Like don't pre-tape them. That's annoying. Like, and then like, not only are they pre-taped, but like everybody who was there is like, they have to like not tell anyone, but like, you know, they went around and told people the results and everything. Also, Nick Suzuki winning a year's supply of Chipotle when we don't have that in Montreal. Like who thought that out? Like really, I, uh, people are talking about, oh, there are, they don't have it. We have Chipotle in Canada. We just do not have it in Quebec. Um, so he can go and like have like, you know, Chipotle once a month or whatever when they travel elsewhere to, to in Canada. But um, this is like, it's honestly... It just, it could be done better. And also the game itself. Uh, we talked about how in baseball there's stakes, right? Like who gets like home court, home, home field advantage, field, home, court yes. advantage. <laughs> home field advantage. Uh, like we talked about the stakes in the, in, in, in having stakes in the NHL one. Like, I think that's really worth it. Like have some sort of stakes. It doesn't necessarily have to be home ice advantage or whatever, but just give, give people something to play for. Um, and make it a bit more compelling. And Scott actually had a really brilliant idea. It was three on three, but some of the players are the mascots. Not it's, all. It's so. so simple. Like, even if it's part of the day before where it's mostly mascots playing and there's, like, one player thrown in there, who cares? You can't tell me that you don't want to see Nick Suzuki feeding Carlton the Bear or, you know, Gritty teaming up with players and doing and having fun with that. Like, Mascots are part of the fun part of this. Like the mascot game is fun because it's ridiculous and over the top. And we Make don't that get to part watch it. it. Yeah. I would absolutely pay to watch gritty body check people. Why not? It's supposed to be, there are no stakes. So who the hell cares? Like have fun with it. Absolutely. And I hope he checks all of the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> Speaking of Toronto, the all-star game is there next year. Scott and I are going to try and go. Uh, we'll keep you posted. Uh, and so that ends it for our all-star segment. Uh, next, we are going to talk about the injuries, the lack of transparency, what the hell's going on with Sean Monaghan. Uh, and that's all coming up in just one moment. But first, this episode is brought to you by Athletic Greens. I started taking Athletic Greens because I wanted to take control of my health. It supports better sleep quality and recovery. It supports mental clarity and alertness, and it is the one thing with the best things. Athletic Greens uses the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third-party testing. With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. It supports all the things. And right now it is time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. 
There's no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. One scoop, that's it. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, Scott, where in the world is Sean Monahan? Uh, in the void, apparently. Uh, so in lieu of doing a, a three down this week, this is kind of a topic that's been on my mind a little bit. And I was willing to let it go because I had gotten my day screwed up earlier in the week and thought Thursday was Friday because I am a perpetually tired person. And the Canadians earlier this week said there was going to be an update on Sean Monahan by the end of this week. It is now Sunday. That was five days ago. We don't have an update. The Canadians have obviously been off. Team players are all around the Caribbean and the world, you know, enjoying their time off, which obviously well-deserved. We don't have an update on Sean Monaghan. And this is the first time that I've had to stop myself and kind of go, Kent and Jeff, what are we doing here? With the rash of injuries and people have been questioning strength and conditioning, training regimens leading to all these injuries and whatnot, the lack of transparency around this and that Sean Monaghan was hurt, played hurt, and has been out since playing hurt in Calgary early on in the season, it, it, it doesn't paint a great picture here. And the biggest thing going into this regime that we had talked about and we had appreciated was more clarity on injuries and transparency and that yes the ahl team provides a weekly update on injuries the canadians usually do as well it's it's not there for with this right now and given that monahan was supposed to be a big part of the trade deadline and someone that the fans generally seem to enjoy having on their team not having transparency around this is uh it's a little bit concerning it's not the end of the world, but at the same time, I look at this and go, we were told this was going to be different, and it's not. And I'm waiting for the bad news to drop here that he's going to be done for the year, even though he was skating or whatnot. I just want an answer on this. I want clarity. I want that transparency we were promised on this. And as of right now, we haven't really gotten that, and that's a little concerning for me. I just did a quick search just to make sure they hadn't said anything <laughs> and they have not, they still have not said anything. So it's Sunday morning when we're recording this. Um, and I think it, it kind of speaks to an overall concern that we've had about the Canadians. And it's not just you and me, Scott, it is the market as a whole is how are they handling injuries? And that lack of transparency gives us concern. I mean, like, let's be honest. We know that Sean Monaghan has had a lot of bad injury luck. We know that there were question marks heading into the season about whether or not he would even be ready for the first, you know, for opening night. So we know that there is some, there's some history there. But at the same time, like, I'm a little bit concerned now because of the number of injuries that keep happening around this time in this market. Um, how are they handling it? And the lack of transparency just kind of adds a level of murkiness there. I don't think they're like out and out like hiding anything or whatever. I just feel like they're not considering it as important as they should in order like they're not considering the transparency part as, as, as important as they should or as important as they've promised us essentially. I also just find that, you know, I'm sure they're looking into you know, the trainers, the therapists, the doctors, whatever, to make sure that this injury situation doesn't perpetuate, like it's not like a Montreal, uh, a Montreal organization thing, because it has been a few years that we are seeing a lot more injuries than the rest of the league. It has been a few years where these injuries keep coming up over and over again. Um, and we know that people come back too, too soon from injuries and they haven't really done much to combat that. So I do hope that this, that's something that they're looking into. But for me, that the like, we're going to tell you, but oh no, like if you don't have an update or if he's had a setback, like with Carey Price, every time he had a setback, you know, last year, they talked about it. It was, you know, relatively transparent. Like they would say that he's, you know, he he's returned to the ice. No, he's not ready. He's had a setback. Like the first few months of the season, it was constantly like, oh, he's back. He's skating. Oh no, he can't. 
So like there was messaging there, like with Sean Monaghan, we're not sure what's going on. And I think it's not specific to Sean Monaghan. I just think in general, like if you are going to preach transparency, like then you should be giving us updates. And I wonder if it's because they, they want to like, he still has trade value. So they want to make sure that other teams don't know his status. But anyways, before a trade is actually signed off on, on the league, like there's, there's like, that gets looked into you know what i mean you can't get away like you have to disclose these things so i just find that like it's just it's just odd to me like that there hasn't been anything like not even just a like a like a one sentence like release to to media to tell us and the thing is he was in a non-contact jersey it seemed like he was getting closer to returning to the game action and which is why this whole thing is so confusing to me is that he was close so either something devastating happened or like you just don't want to announce that he's coming back yet because you've got emergency things up in the air and like it's i the whole thing's very weird and it's a bit off kilter for a team that's been very upfront with hey this guy's out you know eight to ten weeks this guy's out three months they've been upfront about that except for this one like paul byron obviously is his own thing carrie price is obviously you know ltir etc this is the one that hasn't been super clear, and it's the only thing that's really bugged me this week in uh, the land of the Montreal Canadiens and everything else, because I don't fully understand why. And I think that's the biggest thing, is I don't understand why uh, this being so secretive about this. And if this is the only thing that's really bugging us right now, I still think that's a pretty solid week overall. Yeah, I agree. Um, and so we're going to turn our attention to our three up. Uh, and there's tons of people who aren't on the NHL level that are worth calling uh, calling out in a positive way, in a positive way. Uh, and that's all coming up in just one moment. But first, this episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. And this year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. And we're really excited about our new betting, our new sports betting partner, because they're the number one sports book in America. And if, you, if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. You can download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. And best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. And us. All right, Scott, we have plenty to talk about in our three up. I don't know where to start really because the prospects are what's like the prospects are where it's at for the Canadians right now. <laughs> I'm very smart. It is Sunday. I have my mic on mute. Uh, I'm going to start with the most recent one here because this is the big one. And for good reason, uh, Logan Mayu had a hat trick on Saturday night for the London Knights, capping it off with his hat trick goal being a Michigan, which Impressive in its own right to score a Michigan goal, to do it on a hat trick, a natural hat trick, as a defenseman who is known more for power than finesse, is it's it's impressive, to be quite honest. And this is what the improvement that you want to see as Canadians fans, and what we talked about is that his production, while good in its own right, was not where a lot of people wanted it in the prospects community for someone this uh at this stage in their development and this is picking that up a little bit and there have never been doubts about his physical traits on the ice he's a very aggressive physical hard shooting defenseman something the canadians do kind of lack in their system without shea weber now obviously being uh in vague in vegas uh and hmm. more or less retired at this point it, it is good to see those steps forward because obviously progress and uh, development is not a linear path unless you're like Connor McDavid or Connor Bedard where you just continue to go straight up the entire time. This is a good step forward in that, okay, there's some mix to his offensive production. It's not just hammer a slap shot, hammer a slap shot, hammer a slap shot. 
he's used more finesse in his game in recent weeks there. And I think that's what you want to see if you're the Canadians. There is still development that's going to be needed, and that goes for every prospect in the system. I think he's going to be someone that Jean-Francois Houle or whoever is coaching the Rocket next year is going to have to kind of nurture and grow in that. And I do think they'll get to that at some point. But a hat trick is always an impressive thing and well worth celebrating, especially when you cap it off by doing the Michigan. Like, it's just, it's an impressive feat, all things considered. Yeah, and I think, you know, the big thing here is that now we're finally seeing what happens when you play enough games because we would get asked about him every single mailbag or every time we had a prospect guest on. And we would always say he hasn't played enough games for us to know. And we want to see that step forward. We want to see that improvement. And we want to see his hockey sense as well as his off eye sense get better over time. Like that's what we're looking for in the potential future NHL player uh, that is Logan Mayu. So like this weekend, like the, like the, I think that this is the most significant up for this week. Um, and, you know, if you're if you're hoping for development, if you're hoping for this pick to be worth it, I think this is what you want to see. And now we have to see if he can sustain that improvement over time. Uh, I do have his season stats up here, which is actually very impressive. 17 goals as a defenseman is nothing to scoff at. And yes, part of it is, OK, it's the OHL, et cetera. 17 goals is still nothing to scoff at. I know Pavel Minchikov is still, I believe, leading all defensemen in scoring, but Pavel Minchikov was a top 10 talent pick. It's good progress. There's still things to work on and rein in. And while we're talking about defensemen who are putting up absolutely gaudy offensive numbers in their leagues, we're going to shift things to Lane Hudson, who had four assists on Friday night. And is up to 35 points in two. That's like that's like games. a low night for him. That's a slow night for him. <laughs> I was gonna say, and so if we're putting everything together here, the leading scorer in the NCAA is Adam Fantilli, who has 45 points in 24 games. Top prospect in this upcoming draft. Insanity. Lane Hudson is let's see, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. He's seventh in the NCAA overall. One point ahead of Sean Farrell, who is older than him, who is a forward. Lane Hudson is the highest scoring defenseman in the league. Uh, He's four points ahead of Luke Hughes at the University of Michigan, who gets the benefit of playing with Adam Fantilli and other players on a powerhouse team. Lane Hudson's so stupidly good at hockey. (laughs) I don't know how else to phrase it. It is a treat to watch him when he is cooking because his skating and his mobility is absolutely wild. And when he gets confident, good luck, everybody else. You're (laughs) not containing Lane Hudson once he gets going. And he's gotten bigger. He's up to five foot 10, apparently, which sweet, not important, but awesome. And he's putting up (laughs) 1.4. 1.4 points. What a per steal, game. Scott. What a steal. 62nd <laughs> overall. 62nd overall. I'm beaming. You can see my face. It's glowing. I love talking about Lane Hudson. I just like, like, what a steal. Like, honestly, if it had been a few months later, he would have grown and then he would have gone in the first round. There was a take that if he was five foot eleven, he would have been in contention for first overall. And a lot of people went, I don't know about that. I I don't know. I, I still don't I, know about that. <laughs> I I'm not a hundred. You know I love sure. me some Lane Hudson, but I don't know about that. <laughs> a top ten pick wouldn't have been out of out of the no, realm of possibility. Not. I think yeah. when he plays like that, absolutely no way that he wouldn't be a top ten pick. Right, but he's a he's a defenseman, so automatically, like like it's hard to be a number one overall as a defenseman. But yeah, top ten, absolutely, a hundred percent. Like he. What a steal. I still can't get over it. I literally cannot get over it. Like it's he is him. so good. He is him. He is that guy. <laughs> He's he, that guy. And the thing is, he doesn't have to come to the Canadians next year. I want to see him play another year in college because mm-hmm. I want him to continue to round out like his defense. Like we talked about with Joshua Waugh going back to the QMJHL. I want to see him go back for a sophomore season to round out the other parts of his game to get more professionally ready. We know you can do all the offensive stuff. You can Harlem Globetrotter teams in the offensive zone. Can you work on 
shutting down plays at the other end to become that fully rounded player. And I don't, I'm not asking him to become a shutdown specialist. I'm just asking him to be able to hold his own because the NHL is going to ask that of you. Yes. You're not always going to be able to Harlem Globetrotter or other teams. Eric Carlson had to play defense. PK Subban had to play defense. Victor Hedman had to play defense. Roman Yossi, et cetera. You have to be able to do both, even if your strength is at the other end. And I want to see him continue that. And here's the thing, based on how much he's developed this season already, he's so far beyond what I expected this year that I expected maybe 15, 20 points overall because he's a freshman defenseman. He's small in a very competitive section of the NCAA. Expectations blown out of the water. Now continue that development. Keep that focus and continue that path moving upwards here. I'm so excited. It's hard to not be excited about Lane Hudson. It's been a long time since the Canadians have had a player that in the NCAA people have been like, oh, wow, they that's that he's that guy. Like, and it's it's really it is good to see. It is an incredible value pick at 62nd overall. A hundred percent. And then finally, our third up, which you know, last but not least, but also probably shortest now that, that <laughs> <laughs> Lane Hudson is growing. Uh, is uh, is Raphael Harvey Pinard. Uh, and, we love. and the thing is, we said that this is mostly outside the NHL and everything, but Harvey Pinard's on here because he's been just absolutely eating it up at the NHL level. The one game they played this week, two big goals for the Canadians to get uh, to tie the game and take the lead against the Ottawa Senators, even though they lost, whatever. Raphael Harvey Pinard has earned himself an NHL spot. And there's a reason he didn't go back down at the AHL All-Star break. Yes, Yelonen and Alex Belzeal did. Raphael Harvey Pinard and Justin Barron did not. I think they like what they're seeing. It's not always there's there's growing pains, especially in the case of Justin Barron. But for Raphael Harvey Pinard, he's filling that void of Brendan Gallagher esqueness in that he's getting to the dirty areas. He's not scoring pretty goals, but he's scoring goals with effort. And I was on the Sick podcast talking about this. I've been screaming for three years about how Rafael Harvey Pinard will be an NHL player on this team. It might be a fourth liner, but he's going to be an NHL player on this team. And he's proving us correct in that regard. It's hard to not root for that. That's homegrown development talent. And that's what you want to see. If you're the Canadians, we saw it with Jake Evans. We're seeing it with Rafael Harvey Pinard. We're hopefully going to see that with Jesse Yalone and Xavier Simino, et cetera. More of that. Development yes. breeds success in the future. A hundred percent. And I was just about to say, like, now we can stop pointing only to Jake Evans as somebody who was developed within the organization. Um, and so that's our three, well, our one down and three up for this week. Uh, and we hope you enjoyed this episode. We've got special guests coming up all this week. So make sure you are subscribed to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. You can find us on Twitter at LO underscore Canadians. You can also... Um, tag us or dm us mailback questions on twitter you can also email us at locked on canadians at gmail.com you can also leave questions in the youtube comments just put mailbag question at the beginning so i consider it a mailbag question uh and not just a discussion topic for the day uh, thank you so much for listening and if you want to find scott on twitter he's at scott metla i'm at the active stick we will talk to you tomorrow